Hello, and welcome to this short demonstration of the Wind River Hypervisor. The Hypervisor is the newest product in Wind River's multi-core software solutions offering. My name is Mark Hermeling, and I'm one of the product managers at Wind River, focusing on multi-core and virtualization. The Wind River Hypervisor provides new capabilities to system architects trying to build the embedded systems of tomorrow. It provides for virtualization of the embedded hardware, such that the architect can decide to run multiple different operating systems and multiple different instances of those operating systems on single or multi-core processors. In this short demonstration, I'll show you how you can configure both VxWorks and Linux on top of a single as well as a multi-core processor. And I'll show you how you can debug these systems using the Wind River Workbench. I'll keep this demonstration fairly short. Uh, more information about the Wind River Hypervisor and uh, the other uh, offerings from Wind River in the multi-core uh, area, multi-core and virtualization area, you will be able to find at our website uh, and I'm trying to keep up to date with a short blog series there as well. In this demonstration, I'll use both a single core power PC, it's a um, Wind River single board computer 8548. And on that single board computer, I'll first start by running both VxWorks as well as Linux on that single core. Uh, VxWorks will have the serial port, so we'll see output from VxWorks uh, in, a, in a small console. And Linux will have the Ethernet, and I'll show you how I can debug Linux um, through the workbench. After this, the, this first part of the demonstration, I will switch to uh, a dual core, sorry, a quad core Intel board, and I'll show you how I can run VxWorks on one board, Linux on the other board, and how I can debug both uh, both different operating systems. Allow me to get started with this uh, demonstration. Then let me first turn on um, the board. What you can see here is the VxWorks bootloader. It'll wait a couple of seconds, and then it will boot the what we call the system image. The system Im image is a single image that contains the hypervisor binaries itself, as well as binaries for VxWorks and Linux. And using that single image, um, it will be transferred to the board to, with through TFTP, and then using that single image, the hypervisor will boot first, and then once it's done booting, it'll start booting the different operating systems. In the window here, you'll only see it's booting VxWorks, because Linux is actually uh, running headless. It doesn't have a serial port. I just haven't configured it with, with this serial port. So you can see VxWorks is up here. Um, the normal commands that I always have with VxWorks are live, so I can develop for this VxWorks instance as if I was developing for a VxWorks instance that runs native on a, on a processor. However, in the background, um, what you cannot see is that Linux has actually booted and is running as well. So in the background, I can ping uh, Linux. It's at 224.147.38. So I can ping Linux, and I can actually see that it's sending a, a ping replies back. A better way to see what different virtual boards I have running is by using the built-in uh, debugger shell. And in the debugger shell, I can uh, ask uh, PS request a, a job list, and I can see that there's various different managers and kernels that are running. The, the hypervisor is based on a microkernel approach, so there's a few different threads running. But what's actually important that we're interested in is here in the bottom, Linux and VxWorks, and using the hypervisor debug shell, I can uh, uh, request information about my different virtual boards and, and things like that. So this is all uh, very interesting. Of course, I can also use the, the rest of the, the Wind River tools as a, for example, workbench here. I have a target connection to my uh, virtual board. I can simply connect that target connection. It will create a connection to Linux that's running on that power PC as a second operating system next to VxWorks. And I can do my normal development as I would normally do. So I can do say file new example application. I can make a Wind River Linux sample application project. Make it the world famous Hello World application. I'll have to set the proper compiler, which will be this compiler here. I can build this and I can debug this on top of my Linux connection. There we go. And what you cannot see is that in the background, um, next to my VxWorks, Linux is running, and and VxWorks is running here at the same time. So I have VxWorks and Linux both running on the same single core.